Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game uh, Rick and Morty Close Recounters of the Rick Kind Deck Building Game. Hey, this is a deck building game, Morty! This was sent to me by Cryptozoic Entertainment and is designed by Matt Hyra and Corey Jones. After Ricks from different dimensions turn up dead, Rick is accused of crimes against Rickmanity. It's up to Rick and his warring personalities to take down the Council of Ricks and get to the bottom of this Rickicide. While you begin with only your genius waves, as the game progresses, you will add new, more powerful cards to your deck with the goal of defeating as many Council of Ricks members and Evil Rick as you can. In the end, the player who has accumulated the most victory points from the cards in their deck wins the game. Now this game uses the same engine, the Cerberus engine, as the DC Comics deck building game which I reviewed in episode 15. You can go watch that to get a sense of the rules. I'm not going to go through all the rules again because there's a lot of similarities. Instead I'm going to go over what is different about this game in comparison to the original and there are some interesting little tweaks that they added to the game. But yeah, let me show you how to play. So the basic concept of the game is still the same. You play cards to get power, and when you get power, you can use that power to either buy cards from the lineup, as you can see from these five cards over here. Um, that gets replenished from the main deck, and then there are these Ricks who you have to defeat. You can also use power to defeat Ricks. Uh, whoever gets the most victory points at the end of the game is still the winner. But let's talk about the differences between this game and the original game. So everybody starts the game with seven uh, Genius Waves cards. These are just your typical like punch cards plus one power. Um, but in this game, you actually have three different characters as your vulnerability cards. These have no effect like normal, but depending on other cards in the game, if you play a Jerry, sometimes another card will have an effect that affects that Jerry, or if you play a Beth, or so on. So depending on your strategy, you might want to actually keep these in your deck if you have cards that go well with them. For example, the Phone Sticks card, you uh, draw a card and then an additional card for each summer you play or have played this turn. The characters you can play are all different oversized Ricks. You got Angry Rick, if you control four or more different card colors during your turn, plus two power. Annoyed Rick, if you played two or more Rick cards during your turn, may put a starter in your hand into a foe's hand. You got Happy Rick, you've got Crazy Rick, you've got Calm Rick, and you have Drunk Rick. Uh, these are the six characters you can choose from. Here, instead of Super Villains, we have Ricks, and uh, this is the Council of Ricks deck. You start with Rick 4. Uh, he is just on the top, and he's 8 power to defeat. Um, but if we can look in here, you've got stuff like Rick Prime. He has a group attack that each player discards a card with cost uh, a prime number. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, etc. Um, you've got uh, Quantum Rick. Um, each player flips their character card face down until this card is defeated. But if you recruit him uh, and play him, you can play the top two cards of the location deck. I'll explain what that is in a second. Um, at end of the turn, gain one of them and destroy the other. And then the game always ends with Evil Rick as the final boss. Uh, at the start of your turn, he attacks everybody, and everyone has to discard a card with Morty in their name, or destroy a Rick in their hand or discard pile. Morty Waves are the new sort of weakness cards, but these are special in that um, normally they're negative one victory points at the end of the game, but for every one of your starter genius wave cards you still have at the end, you can actually negate uh, the penalty. So for this, it becomes a zero point penalty as opposed to a negative one penalty. The portal gun is the new kick, and this is actually a very interesting mechanic. It's plus two power, but also uh, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, play the top card of the location deck. At the end of your turn, if you don't buy it, you can put it back uh, into the location discard pile. So this represents the show how Rick uses the portal gun to go to different dimensions. So if I play the portal gun, discard a card, and I reveal, here we've got Reverse Height Universe. Uh, this is a location ongoing during your turn, or each of your turns. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it has cost three or less, plus power equal to its cost. Now, I can just play this when I play the portal gun in front of me. But if I like the card, uh, during that turn, I can purchase it with power and add it to my discard pile. But if I don't, I just discard it to the location discard pile. So. I like how this is sort of like an interesting twist on the kick. It makes it so that this is actually worth purchasing if instead of like a kick where kicks are good, but you only buy them as a last resort. But these actually can let you explore in some interesting cards like Gazorp Azorp. Uh, when you buy or gain a second card during your turn, you may place it on top of your deck. Um, Greasy Grandma World, uh, the first time you play a Genius Waves during each of your turns, plus one power. There's a bunch of different locations here, Phone World, Replacement Dimension, Cromulon Dimension, um, and there's a lot of different effects you can explore with the Portal Gun. And I'll go through some of the cards. Now in the game there are different types of cards. There's Rick cards, um, you've got 
Uh, Cronenberg Rick here. Put the top card of your deck on your character. This card has the game text of each card on your character this turn. And at the end of the game, you destroy those cards. There are Morty cards, like Evil Morty here. Uh, play the top card of the Council of Rick stack, then return it to the top of the stack. You basically get to use their uh, effect for free. Uh, Morty Insurance, this is an equipment card. It's plus one power, and each time a Morty is destroyed in any zone, you may reveal this card from your hand. Uh, it stays in your hand. If you do, you get to draw a card. And then special cards make a return, like Tentacle Trap. It's plus one power and draw a card. And also it's an attack card, so every other foe has to discard a card with cost eight or greater if you play this card. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Uh, beside the Portal Gun and the Location Deck is the main new mechanic. Uh, otherwise, it plays pretty similarly to uh, regular Cerberus Engine, the DC deck building game. Uh, but yeah, that's how you play. Once you kill Evil Rick, the game's over, count all your victory points, and whoever has the most wins. I've always been a fan of the Cerberus engine. It's simple, it plays fast, and I have a fun time generating a whole bunch of power buying cards. It's fun. It's just a fun deck building system. The portal gun and location stack is actually a really clever mechanic. It fits super well thematically. Uh, it turns the kick from the DC Comics deck building game, like a card that's okay, uh, into a really useful tool that can give you some great effects and maybe a new card to buy, like those... Since they're ongoing location effects, they're really useful. I also think it's interesting that the vulnerability cards are different members of Morty's family. Um, like I said, some cards specifically combo with members of uh, the family like Jerry or Summer. So I'm not sure how well that balances out since each player only gets one. There are cards in the game that can act as replacements for them. But again, I don't know if there's like a really a lot of balancing outside of that if everyone can just have one maybe two if you get another one from somebody else the screen caps from the show actually look pretty nice on the cards they did a good good job making them look nice um every now and then you also get like a funny little extra action you got to do like i think one of them is like you flip someone the bird or something like that it's like aha uh -huh, get it rick and morty it, it adds a little more you know of a sense of humor to the game it's it's cute However, there aren't enough Ricks to fight in the game. Uh, in the DC deck building game, a normal game is like 8, but you can go up to 12, and usually we like to go hard and play like all 12 or something like that. But in this game, you only get 7, and I find that makes the game shorter than I'd like it to be. I would at least like to be able to choose if I want to do like 12 or 8 to 12 or something like that, but you only get 7, and it's a little limiting. Overall, if you like the Cerberus engine and or deck building games, and if you like Rick and Morty, this is a solid game. Um, like with most games in the series, uh, some cards can be pretty overpowered, and there's some balancing issues here and there, but at the end of the day, it's just fun. It's a fun, solid deck builder, and I do like the portal gun mechanic, and it makes it feel like it's Rick and Morty. There's enough humor and enough like interesting mechanics in the way cards work together that really do fit thematically. So uh, yeah, if you're a Rick and Morty fan, I actually would recommend this. It's it's really fun and like the other ones in the series. So it's good shit. It's good shit, Morty. Morty. Morty.